Ever wondered what these little pieces of wood are for when you buy a new canvas? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you should be doing to make sure that a new canvas is primed and ready to go. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And if you're new to this channel and you want to learn about painting or get some new weekly top tips, then do hit that subscription button just below guys because we do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday and this channel is all about developing your art skills. So in today's video we're going to go right back to the basics but it's something that so many people actually aren't aware of and that is how to really prime a brand new can canvas properly. Now, when I was training in art, I would always make my own canvases. So literally cut the wood, cut the canvas, prime the canvas, layer the whole thing up. Nowadays, they are so much cheaper that most people are pre-buying this from art shops. But there are certain things like this that we're not always fully aware of. And a lot of people just dismiss them and throw them away. You will be astonished at the difference that these little things make in terms of improving your paint skills. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why. Let's have a look. So this is a typical type of canvas that you might buy in the shops, guys. Um, they will say sometimes they've already been pre-primed. Often they'll say they've been double coated. I would never trust that because I want to actually have complete control over my canvas. If you turn over, you'll notice that they usually come with something like this. This is a little bag of inserts which are actually designed for creating more tension into your canvas. A lot of people just dismiss these and throw them out. Actually, you should really be using these things. So all you want to do, I'll just take them out here, they simply go into these slots here. You can see there's some little slots, I'll show you in the camera. These little slots just here and they were just going to fit in. So I'm just going to put in one and then sometimes you actually one will do the job. I think that's actually working quite nicely. There is space for a second one if you feel it's not tense enough, but that's pretty good. You'll actually notice the tension of this instantly when you put these in. So I would always suggest you do this before you put the gesso onto your canvas because again, it's about having lots of good tension so that you don't get any wrinkles into your canvas. At the end of the day, if you're doing something that's quite thick, so if you're using like an impasto paint, for example, you really wanna make sure that you've got plenty of tension into your canvas itself. Just put that one in there. And then push it all the way in and then we are Good to go so the difference now almost feels like a drum whereas earlier it was a little bit saggy so now we're ready to actually put the gesso on um, gesso is something that can be quite expensive uh, and i'm a big fan of making my own ingredients so i have actually done a video recently where i show you the ingredients of making your own gesso at home just using some basic ingredients and that's what i'm going to use straight away if you're interested in seeing that video guys i'll leave a link just below now, when it comes to putting gesso on itself, I'm a big fan of actually just pouring it straight onto the canvas. And then there's two little tricks I like to use. One is this big brush. This is absolutely fantastic for really distributing paint quickly, particularly for things like this. The other one is actually a shower cleaner. These are also just as effective. Today, I'm gonna to go with the brush just because it gives me a little bit more consistency. So you're literally just gonna spread it all the way across. Some people like to do the edges as well. Now remember the benefit of actually putting gesso onto your canvas is that you're actually enabling the paint to stick. So there's a little bit of grit in this. I've actually put some talcum powder into my gesso. Some people just like to use PVA and water, which is just as fine. Um, I've also previously used just primer paint, some cheap primer paint. But if you have a little bit of talcum powder in there, you get a really effective slight subtle texture and it just means that you're able to actually allow the acrylic paint to really grip onto the canvas itself. If you were not to use gesso guys, the difference is that all your paint's going to get absorbed into the actual canvas and everything becomes an awful lot more difficult. Top tip as well here, if you are doing something like a blended background, so if you're doing a sunset, or if you're doing a, a very subtle blend of background, you will want to be working onto a wet primer because this will actually help blend those colors together. 
Once you're happy, I'd actually, if I'm doing a fine detail painting like now, then I'd actually let this dry. Then I'd do another coat onto this as well, just to make sure that I'm fully covered with my primer. So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and seen how just small little pieces of wood like this can make a massive difference when it comes to really improving your art skills. If you have enjoyed today's video, then do hit that like button and subscription button just below because it really does help our channel and it will help you get some more weekly top tips. We do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday guys. So if you hit that notification bell just below, you know when we're coming back online. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.